Hi there, I'm Ulfa Toberek. Uh, I have my coffee and my phone out, so I thought I'd take the opportunity to answer some of the most recent questions that I found interesting. So, a long overdue Q&A video coming up. Yeah, right now I'm in Jön Shopping at Studio B. I'm here to record a brand new hardcore band called In My Way. Um, so it's going to be interesting to see what they come up with. Yeah, and as I said, I thought I'd take the opportunity to answer some questions. So I'm going to pop up my phone and uh, see what we have. Emmanuel Elinas wrote, uh, would you share the layout diagram of that summing mixer? So it's referring to a summing mixer I built in this studio a long time ago before I had this sound workshop mixer. I had an, another mixer that didn't have a, that didn't have a monitor return path. Uh, so I had to make a monitor mixer to hear what was going on my on my tape recorder. So I can show the I have the mixer here. I'm not using it anymore. It's just filling up space in the rack. So it it looks pretty fancy on the surface. Uh, behind the surface, it's not as fancy. <laughs> so what we have, it's like it's a total mess, but it's working. It was. Uh, what I was doing is I had uh, 24 channels with the uh, fader and, uh, and pan. And also I could uh, route whether I wanted the signal to go through the monitor mixer or directly through uh, mixing on the console. I don't have a, a diagram or schematic on this one. Uh, I know I found the, the passive summing mixer schematics on I think it was on DIYRecordingEquipment.com um, so if you just google DIY passive summing mixer you will find what you're looking for and then you just have to work away from there to make it do what you want but if you if you just want to make a, a simple passive summing mixer it's quite easy and uh, if you want to start off even more easy I think they have kits on DIYRecordingEquipment.com uh, for, I don't know if it's 8 or 16 channels of summing. So check that out. Uh, next question is from Jake Nolan. Do you recommend only reamping in the same room the drums were originally recorded in? Short answer, no. Um, I mean, you can do that if you record in a room and you don't want tons of cymbal leakage and stuff in your room microphones. Uh, you can just route the close mics out in a PA system and uh, reamp that in a room if you want more of the room. It, I mean, the benefits of reamping it in the, in the same room is that you it's probably quite easy to blend it and make it sound natural since it's already in the same room. I don't see any reason to have any restrictions on what room you should reamp it in. You can reamp re it wherever you want to get the character you want. Uh, next one is more of a comment than a question, but I want to address it. It's from someone called Grief or Griff. I'm not sure. Please lose the music in your videos. I'm all for the metal, sludge, punk, anything heavy, but in this setting, I think it's not relevant. Thank you. Love your videos. So thank you for being positive about my videos, and thank you also for the constructive criticism. Um, to be honest, I usually only put music in the background when I have a bad recording if, I, if there's a lot of background noise uh, or something like that and sometimes I just kind of tried it out to see what kind of feeling I could get out of it but I don't really have any good music laying around and I'm um, I don't like using like those kind of licensing services where you can get free music to use in your videos because I mean I have a recording channel I should be able to use my music that I produce myself, right? But this is more like a question from me to you uh, who watch my videos. Do you think music in the background of videos are bad overall or just if it's like hardcore uh, music in some way? Because um, I'm thinking about doing some more mellow music that would work better to have in the background because sometimes I feel I can concentrate better what some someone is talking about if there's like something going on in the background. But I mean, not everyone is the same. So what do you think? Uh, music in the background? No music in the background? Is it genre dependent? Um, what kind of music do you like in the background? So next question is from Thales Stat. I think it's pronounced. I'm not sure. Um, 
what else do I need to use that kind of unit? Because I don't see any input. So he's referring to a video I did pretty long time ago where I built a 500 series uh, module from DIY recording equipment. They're getting a lot of uh, shout outs today. <laughs> um, and I think maybe I wasn't clear that it's a 500 series unit. So you have to have like a, a rack where you put this module in it. That rack contains like the power section and also the in and out routings uh, to connect with your other studio gear. Uh, and the good thing about it is if you want to start building DIY stuff, 500 series gear is a really good place to start because you don't have to get involved with the high voltage uh, electricity or stuff like that. You just build the, the signal path. Uh, and uh, the power section and everything is already taken care of by the 500 rack unit. Um, and there are pretty cheap units with like from everything, everywhere from like two slots to 10 slots. And you can find them relatively cheap if you look under cheaper brands. Like I think Midas is releasing one now. Um, so just Google API 500 series uh, if you want to learn more about it. It's a cool concept. You can pretty much like plug and play with different units and just build your own um, signal chains in a really easy way without having to patch a lot of stuff. Next question is from Sam Oates or Oates. I'm not. I'm really terrible with pronouncing names that are not like Swedish or just a regular ones. <laughs> I'm sorry for butchering. I'm very impressed. It sounds so rich. Can I have the laser cut files, please? I've gotten a lot of emails about this, and uh, I think there is a link in the original video to where you can find the the laser cut files and also the laser cut files for the the cogs uh, that I'm that I was doing for the corrugation tool. But if you watch this now and you're also curious, uh, I'll put a link in the description of this video to where you can get the the laser cut files for the plastic part of the ribbon microphone I was building. Also, there will be a link uh, up here uh, to that video building the ribbon microphone. And last question for today from Claudio Banelli. Uh, and that's regarding the, the video I did on um, the mastering part of the album from my band, Graceful Fall, where we did the full album 100% analog from start to finish. Uh, and I really, really smashed the, the master tape and uh, so here's the question. Why did you smash the signal into the master recorder? You don't lose signal quality and also you don't lose dynamics. When you will do the master on vinyl, you will compress it again. And in that way, you will over compress it. Am I wrong? But maybe it's another way of working. I prefer to do not record hot on tape, but it's just my way of seeing things. In any case, you have a great studio. Thank you, Claudio. Um, Broadly, I agree with you. Uh, if you want a, a good representation of the sound, uh, you should probably treat your recorder with a little bit more respect and don't do it that hot. But in this case, I kind of wanted to crush the signal. I wanted to get a lot of character out of it. And uh, also th the first round of masters I did, I had the signal way too low. And uh, since I don't use I don't use any noise suppression tools in the recording, so I thought I got a little bit too much noise out of some some of the more mellow parts in the music. So that's why I tried crushing it really hard and I did a lot of different versions of it. Uh, and those were the ones I liked the most. They sound aggressive and really cool. And the benefit from it was when I came to the, the vinyl engravement, doing the vinyl master at Atlantis Studios. He didn't have to put any extra compression on it. It was just it was already finished. He didn't even have to use the the pre-delay thing to where the engravement machine can like see if there are any dynamic stuff that sticks out. So it can leave more room on the on the original vinyl because everything was already like flat. Um, and I got actually got complimented for it by Janne at Atlantis Studios. He really liked it. And uh, also when I did the masters for the digital version, I didn't have to limit it anymore either because it was already like min minus nine luffs or something like that without even putting limiter on it. So there's no digital clipping on, uh, on that master, uh, which is pretty cool. That's all the things I'm going to answer today. Um, 
If you're curious about any other stuff, leave leave questions on uh, videos to see, or you can leave questions in this video. I will try to make another Q and A in a not too far away future. Yeah, just leave your questions in this video or any other video you watch, and I will try to attend them. If I find if there are questions I find interesting, I will do so. As you can see, I'm up over 9,000 subscribers now, so I really, really want to get this channel over 10,000 subscribers. So please help me by clicking that subscribe button. And uh, also, if you like my videos, please consider sharing them with your friends or on your social media like Facebook and stuff like that. Tell people to come watch. Thank you so much. Uh, see you next time. Bye-bye. Cheers.